What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Another video here with CP Kids. It's your boy, Chad Michael Temple, and... And your favorite, Jayla. Ladies and gentlemen, the first thing we do when we get to Karen Place is... We... Pray! We... Pray! We... Pray! We... Pray! We pray. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Let's pray. All right, so let's go ahead and bow our heads and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for another day and another chance to know more about you and grow closer with you. And right now, we just want to lift up our problems to you, God. We all face problems due to different things and different people and maybe even ourselves. But just pray that right now we wouldn't quit when we face those problems, but that we would give them to you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is game time! The name of the game today is Paper Football. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what's gonna happen. You need to have a table. It doesn't have to be quite as long as this table. But you have to have a table. And you have one person on one end of the table and the other person on the other end of the table. And you make a paper football. Now this is how you make it. Here's a simple but fun fold. We use regular eight and a half by 11 inch notebook paper. Start by folding in half the long way. Next, unfold what we just did and fold each half in towards the center crease. After we fold in these flaps, we're going to fold in half again along the original crease. Next, choose one end and turn the corner up to make a triangle. Then flip that triangle up and make another triangle. square flap and fold it down. And finally we'll take that flap and tuck it in. And there you go. Now the rules of paper football are very, very simple. You have four downs to either score a touchdown or a field goal. And then you just play first one to have as many points or you have a time limit, however you want to do it. But you have four downs to get to the field goal position or a touchdown. Now, how you get those four downs is you start with your paper football hanging off the table like this. So you start with your paper football, see how it's hanging off the table. And your first time to hit it, you actually hit it one good time with your hand like this. And that gives you your first down. Now you have four downs to get to a touchdown or a field goal. Now, the way you do your next downs is you have to flick it, but you don't wanna flick it too hard because if you do, it can go off the table. So you wanna be nice and gentle and you're just trying to get your four downs to a touchdown. Now, how you get a touchdown is by hitting the paper football and it landing. I'm about to get this right now on video and be on ESPN. You get a touchdown. You get the football to come and hang off of the edge of the table. If you do that, it's a touchdown. And then you go from there to a field goal. And this is a field goal. One person puts up the field goal with their fingers. The other person holds the football with one finger and then has to flick it into the field. Has to flick it into the field goal. simple game paper football if you don't get to the touchdown or field goal within your four downs then the ball gets overturned to the person on the other side of the table the team who scores the most or who has the most points in a certain amount of time wins that's paper football who's gonna win that game was so much fun i really love paper football but you know what else i love i love to worship let's get to it can see the wonderful things you have for me open my eyes so i can be all that you have 
All right, y'all, so check this out. Right now, I'm gonna give you guys the main point of today's entire lesson, and that's this. Right here, I have this pitcher, and it has water in it. Can you guys see the water? See that water? Now, I want this pitcher to represent our life, right? And I want the water inside to represent all of the problems that happen in life. You see, problems in life can come, most of the time, from one of three places. Either others, so someone else is just causing a problem in your life, it can come from circumstances or things, things that are just out of your control. You can't do anything about it. It's just a problem that comes up. And then also third, and this is where most of my problems come from, and that's you. Not you, <laughs> not me, me. I, problems usually come from me. I usually create problems in my own life. And so what I wanna show you guys though is this, is that we have an option. We can either rise above those problems or we can sink beneath them. And so how do you do this? How do you rise above a problem? Now, one thing I have right here, sorry, this camera's so close to my face. I have two things right here. I have a rock and I have a cork. Now, I wanna show you guys the rock first, okay? That man looked at me funny because he sees me recording myself, but who cares? So check this out. I have this rock. Now, when I put this rock into this water, what do you think is gonna happen to it? It's going to sink exactly straight down to the bottom dude look at that i mean that thing is just in there completely submerged underneath all of those problems now i'm going to take this cork i want you guys to watch what happens to the cork you ready for this you see what it's doing it's floating no matter how much i rock this water no matter if i even take this water or this cork and I push it all the way down to the bottom, it floats right back to the top every single time. Now, why in the world am I showing you guys this? Because we have two options, ladies and gentlemen. We can be like the rock and we can sink all the way to the bottom of our problems. Things happen that are out of our control and we can just Oh, my life is terrible. I don't know what to do. And we try to figure it out on our own. We try to fix the problem on our own and it's not gonna work. Someone at school is causing a problem so we try to fix it by ourselves by maybe like fighting them or we talk back to the teacher or we just try to handle the problem on our own. Well, every time we try to handle the problem on our own, guess what's gonna happen? It's gonna sink. But we can be like this cork right here. You see this cork floats, it rises above the problem. It doesn't matter, you could bring it all the way down to the bottom like I already showed you. What's it gonna do? Float right back to the top. And we can be like that. And how, how can we be like that? By handing our problems over to God. It's that simple. How do we do that? We pray. God, this problem is bigger than me, I need your help. 
God, there's someone in my life who is making fun of me, being mean to me. It's a problem caused by someone else. But God, I can't handle it by myself. I need your help. Help me to show that person who's making fun of me love. See, that's handing the problem over to God. You know, there's all these different other ways that, that problems arise in our life, and we're gonna talk about that. But the decision is yours. You can either give your problem to God and float above the problems, or you can sink beneath the problem and be completely overwhelmed by the problem by trying to take care of it yourself. What are you gonna do? Slapstick Theater, Hannah and God. This is Hannah. Hi. Hannah was married to a man named Elkana. Hey. But they were not able to have any children. This made Hannah sad. Aw. It's okay, come on. Every year, Hannah and Elkana would go to the house of the Lord at Shiloh to pray to God and offer sacrifices. Hannah would cry out and pray to the Lord. She told God that if he gave her a son, she would give him back to him and that her son would serve God all the days of his life. <laughs> Hannah was so upset that one of the priests, Eli, thought there was something off about her. Uh... But Hannah told him that she had been praying because she had a broken heart. <laughs> Eli told her, may the God of Israel grant the requests you've made. Thank you. And then Hannah was no longer sad. In due time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. Yeah! She named him Samuel, for she said, I asked the Lord for him. Hannah did as she said she would. And once Samuel was a little older, she took him to the temple. Hannah prayed and gave thanks to God, and Samuel grew up in the temple serving the Lord. So in that Bible video, what we saw is a woman who was being made fun of because she couldn't have a kid. But what did she do? Do you remember what she did? Yeah. What did she do? She talked to God about it. She talked to God. She had all these problems, but she took them to God. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. But before we jump absolutely and totally into the lesson, I need you guys to pause this video and go get a piece of paper. Go! Now that you have your piece of paper, what we're going to do is I'm going to be telling some stuff. Jayla and I are going to be talking as we're doing the lesson. But I need you guys to pay attention to how we're folding the paper because you guys are going to fold it with us. And at the end, we're going to have something really, really cool that goes along with the lesson. And it's just going to be kind of fun. So make sure you guys pay attention to what we're saying, but also what we're doing. You guys ready? Can't hear you. Oh, All right. So you have your piece of paper sitting right in front of you. And what I want you guys to do is to take this corner and you're going to bring it all the way over to the edge of the paper. So that way it gets super pointy up here like this. But as we're doing this, I'm going to talk to you guys about something. You see, problems come, most problems come from one of three places. And the first part that we're going to talk about is others, ladies and gentlemen. Others. I don't know if you guys can see my little nifty. I wrote others there. So I can remember what I'm talking about. But others can cause problems. It was just like Hannah from our Bible story. All those other people were making fun of her because she couldn't get pregnant. That's so messed up. Have you ever been made fun of before? I have, actually. Me too. One time I got made fun of because my parents bought me these shoes and I wanted Jordans, but my parents couldn't buy Jordans. And so they got some other types of shoes and I got made fun of on the playground. Mm -hmm. I was always really shy. So I got called a broken toy in elementary school. Oh my gosh, that's really heartbreaking. Yeah. That's really sad. No one likes to be made fun of. But listen, this is the thing. We have an option. You guys remember the rock and the cork at the beginning of the lesson? See, we can either sink with our problems and sink with all the other people who are making fun of us and that kind of stuff, or we can rise above it. But how do you rise above it? What do you do to rise above your problems, Jayla? You gotta take it to God. Take it to God. And listen, it's not like God has an address somewhere. You hop in your car and take him your problem. You can't do it that way, but you can pray. You can pray for the people who are making fun of you. Yeah, you heard me right. Pray for the people who are making fun of you. You can pray that God would give them maybe peace in their home. Maybe their home is really messed up. And so they lash out at school or in the neighborhood at people. You know, who really knows? But you can just pray that God would give you wisdom on how to handle the situation. 
and that he would take the anger away that you feel or the sadness you feel when you get made fun of. That's how we take our problems to God. We talk to him, we pray. All right, now back to the paper. So we did our first fold, which got us to others. Now we're gonna take this corner right here and we're gonna bring it all the way down to this corner and fold it nice and crisp. And when we're done, you're gonna have a shape that looks like a house. So you take that corner and you're gonna bring it all the way over. And what do we have? The next category that we're gonna be talking about of where problems can come from. And that's things, circumstances, stuff that's out of our control. Dude, Jalen, speaking of things or circumstances that can turn into huge problems, have you ever had a circumstance or something that's just totally out of your control that became a big problem? Yeah, one day I was trying to go to work and I go to get in my car and what do you know, have a flat tire. Don't even know how I got there. So frustrating. You know, what? at one time, it's another tire issue. Yeah. But I was going down 465 and right before I got off, uh, or right before I passed up the Brookville Road exit, yeah. my tire exploded literally exploded and I had to hold the wheel and get all the way over to like that little gravelly area That's crazy. where the exit is. It was insane. I had to call my parents. Yeah. They had to leave the Joneses house and my dad had to come and help me put on my spare tire because I was young and I didn't know how. Wow. But it was just something crazy out of our control. Yeah. Flat tire, pop tire. And listen, it doesn't have to just be tires. It could be literally anything, anything. You're just doing life, man. Everything's going fine. Next thing you know, what happens? You slip on a banana peel or you know something crazy happens out of your control and it causes a huge problem those moments can be really frustrating super frustrating and we can get angry and we can and when we do that we usually end up messing up a lot of other things so we have to take it to god and how do we take it to god ladies and gentlemen we pray that's right we pray so whenever you're having something going on that's out of your control just a crazy problem that's happening remember Take it to God. Just pray. Let's get back to this paper. So you have your little house shape paper here. What you're going to do is you're going to turn it sideways. There you go. And now you're going to take this edge right here and you're going to bring it all the way up to this edge. And it's going to give you a nice crisp point over here at this side right here. What we're also going to see when we fold this up nice, tight and crisp is that we have our next category of where problems can come from. And I know, listen. As soon as you see it, some of you guys probably already have, you're going to be like, no, not me. I would never. But ladies and gentlemen, let's be real. You can cause problems. We cause problems ourselves. We bring problems upon ourselves. Okay, so Jayla, I know this one's a little probably uncomfortable because no one wants to talk about how you have caused a problem for your own life. Um, but has it ever happened? Have you ever caused a problem in your own life? Yeah, sure has. I caused a problem and then I caused a bigger problem. Oh boy. So I was in first grade, had a math test, guess I didn't study, I don't know. And I got a big fat F on my math test. And I knew my parents were not gonna be happy, so I was like, eh, I'll just get rid of it. So I took the math test, put it on top of the trash can outside, not thinking that anyone would see it, and went on with my day. And next thing I know, I hear my dad saying, Jayla! And um, he found my math. Oh. So it caused a lot of problems for myself that day. It's terrible. Listen, I'm going to be honest. I have done this more often than not. If I'm going to be real, most of my problems come from me just being dumb. Not that I'm actually dumb, but that I do something that I know I shouldn't do. And so I cause a lot of problems in my own life. Uh, like one time in the third grade, yeah. we, we got these brand new math books. And so our teacher passes them all out. And they still had the plastic wrapper on them. Yeah. You know, they're like brand new. So we unwrapped the plastic wrapper and I put my name, you know, it has like a little name thing in the front of the book. So I put my name in the first rectangle in the front of the book because I was the first one to ever have it. And then I went throughout my entire math book and any picture that had a person in it, I erased the person. Oh no. <laughs> I completely erased them. <laughs> And then my teacher got upset because I had messed up the book that like a lot of kids were gonna have brand to new, use, it's yeah. brand new. And, uh, but then I lied about it. And I knew it was wrong to lie, but I lied anyways. But she was like, wait, weren't you the one who opened up this book? And I said, yes. And she's like, you're the only person who could have done it, Chef Michael, why are you lying? And I was like, I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I caused a problem in my own life. And guess what, I'm willing to bet that you have caused problems in your life as well. And um, when we do that, <clears throat> choke on some spit. When we do that, we have an option. 
we can either get upset with ourselves and down on ourselves and we can be rough on ourselves for you know making a dumb decision or making a mistake but that's not really going to get us anywhere we could get angry i could have gotten mad at my math teacher and be like, oh, leave me alone. but that wouldn't have done anything but you know what you know what i had to do i had to own up to it i had to say yeah i did it and then i had to ask for forgiveness not from jesus or god listen he's going to forgive you but i had to ask my math teacher hey, will you forgive me because I lied to you? And that was really, really uncomfortable. But the biggest thing and everything that had to happen is I just decided that I was gonna take everything to Jesus. And then I decided that I was like, man, I don't wanna keep making mistakes and making my life bad because our mistakes in our life, they actually can affect the lives around us. And I didn't want that to happen. And so I decided that I would just take it to Jesus. Yeah. Just pray, take it to him. That's all we can really do. All right, so you have this little shape right here. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this top edge right here and you're gonna fold it down to this edge here. And it's gonna look a little weird and my paper is actually kind of really thick. So I'm gonna try to get this as straight as possible. And what you're gonna have is this little shape here. So it was like that. You fold it down, just make it nice and crisp. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna rip this straight down the middle through all the folds and everything. Just rip it straight down the middle. Now we're gonna see if I can do this. I'm using really thick paper. So I might actually have to use some scissors or something. Yeah, I'm gonna have to use some scissors. All right, back with some scissors. Now you probably won't have to do this because your paper probably isn't as thick as mine. But you're just going to rip it. And if you have to cut it, ask your parents let them help you cut it. But you're just gonna go right down the middle. And there's gonna be some pieces that fall away and fall off, like those ones right there, and that's totally fine. But once you do that, and I'll get it down here. So you've ripped it all the way down. Once you make that last little rip. So once you do that, you're gonna have two pieces. You have a shorter side and you have a longer side. You're gonna take the longer side and set that off to the side real quick. Now, what I wanna show you guys is this. You have all these little extra pieces of paper. And what's really cool is with this piece of paper, you can actually spell something out here. And this is what we're gonna, this is what we really wanted to boil down to today, ladies and gentlemen, is that problems in life can come from, honestly, they can come from anywhere. They can be things that are out of our control. They can be people making fun of us, you know, so it comes from others. It can come from circumstances that we can't control. It can come from, there we go. It can come from problems that we have created ourselves. But what ends up happening, ladies and gentlemen, is we have in life, it smells like, I feel really cool about that, by the way. Um, in life, we have lots and lots of problems. But the thing is, is that in life, if we decide that no matter where the problem comes from, whether it's coming from others, coming from things or circumstances that we can't control, or even problems that we've created ourselves, if we take that, now this is the long piece that I said put to the side, I want you to very carefully unwrap it, and what you have is the cross. If we take our life and put it at the foot of the cross, Jesus doesn't promise that all of our problems are going to go away. That's not his promise. But Jesus' promise is that through life, through all the problems, no matter where the problem comes from, if we go to the cross, if we go to Jesus, then we can be like the cork and we can rise above all of the problems. Jesus never promised that we wouldn't have problems. He promised that he would walk through every single one with us. So ladies and gentlemen, if you guys remember... In the Bible story, there was the woman who couldn't have a baby. Now, listen, the fact that she couldn't get pregnant, that was a circumstance that was out of her control. And other people were making fun of her for it. It's not fair at all. But she knew that she could go to someone, God, and she did. She took her problems to God. And ladies and gentlemen, you and I have the same choice. Whenever we have a problem, we can take it to God and he'll walk through it with us every single time. Let's talk to God about this now. 
Dear God, we just thank you for the life of Hannah and how we can learn from her and how she was facing a problem out of her control, but she took it to you. And so we all face problems, God, so I pray that when we face those problems that we would take them to you and that we talk to you about them, God, because you're the one that can help us uh, walk through them. So we love you, and in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the Sunday Challenge. And remember, if you participate in this and then send it in, you could be our next winner. What we want to see is we want to see the crosses that you made from participating in the lesson today. From folding it correctly, tearing it correctly, and then unfolding it nice and gentle, you'll end up with a cross. And we want to see a picture of you with your cross. And you're going to send that picture in to caringplacekids2020 at gmail.com. And if you do that, you can be the next winner. See you better submit it. Let's go!